section is on allele-specific copy number analysis of tumors, which is uh, known as ASCAP. Um, the algorithm was developed by Peter Van Lu, um, who at the time was at Oslo and currently at the Tanger Center. Um, the algorithm was published in TNAS in late 2010, and the idea of uh, ASCAP was essentially to automate uh, discovery of diploidy and percent uh, normal contamination in tumor samples to get allele-specific copy numbers. Oops. So the basic principle, um, I will review again the, the SNP array data. It requires uh, SNP data. So if you just look on the top panel uh, where you have the log R. So what you expect in a normal situation uh, where it's uh, denoted that blue X is the paternal allele and the pink one is the, uh, the mother, the maternal one. Um, if, if you have two copies, normal diploid, you have log ratio at zero and you get the three back. If you have loss of one allele, so if the maternal allele is lost, um, you get uh, log ratio moves down because it's less copies and then you lose the heterozygous in the middle, so it becomes homozygous. And this is, again, normal. In this case, where it's called UPD or copy neutral LOH, uh, you, the sample has lost the maternal allele, and the paternal one has been duplicated. So you have two copies of one allele, so you end up with uh, homozygous region only, and the log ratio is at, at zero. And then if you have a gain, uh, trisomy, so the paternal allele has been uh, gained, so the log ratio goes up, and you end up with this imbalance with these four bats. So this is what happens and what you expect by looking at very nice, clean, simple uh, data. Now, in cases where you have aneuploidy, where you have now four copies, if you did not have the SNP data, this would look pretty much like a normal sample. You would not be able to tell there's any copy number difference. But if you have this uh, SNP information, uh, you can see that in this case, this is a balanced uh, gain. So uh, both the paternal and maternal copies were gained by one copy. So it looks, again, just like normal. This looks like a UPD case, and this, again, looks normal. In this case, you have three copies of the father uh, clone and one of the mother. So um, but you don't see there is any gain. So it's an kind of amplification with this separation. Uh, so the justification for observing this type of a phenomena is really what gives it away as being four, four copies. So you got a three to one ratio. Um, so the SNP array helps you determine that, yeah, this is not a normal diploid genome. This has uh, actually been uh, tetraploidy. Now, the other um, issue is non-aberrant cell mixture, which comes in many other solid tumors, where you have uh, the non-aberrant or normal um, cells mixed with the aberrant or the tumor cell. So in case where they're both normal, you end up with a normal profile. But as we talked about in previous session, it, you have normal mixed with a loss of cells, you get this mosaic event for the copy number loss, and you have mosaic gains where these guys come in and squish farther down. Now, what ASCAT tries to do is, uh, the, back in 2010, there were some papers that talked about um, coming up with non aberrant cell mixture or aneuploidy separately. ASCAT tries to address both of these at the same time. Um, just uh, to be clear, there are now additional algorithms that have come out, uh, such as uh, Absolute, which borrows a lot from ASCAP and other methods, um, but adds certain things like priori knowledge to it. So the side track. So how does ASCAP work? So the original ASCAP algorithm, ASCAP 1.0, uh, required a match normal for every tumor cell. Uh, that requirement has been lifted in, in the later version of ASCAP. But what it does with the, the, the normal is to identify all the probes 
as you see here, is shaded in gray, that were homozygous in the germ line or the normal because they don't really carry much information. So the first thing ASCAP does is to detect all the homozygous probes in the, the germ line and remove them. So you end up with only probes that were heterozygous, which is the uh, red bars. And you take the log ratio and the BLE frequency of the tumor for those probes and then segment them using uh, the algorithm AFPCF to segment the genome. Now, then based on these equations, which look scarier than what they are, um, here NA is the number of copies of the A allele, the number of copies of the B allele, so this is the total uh, uh, number of copies. Rho here is the aberrant cell fraction. So the other one, you got two copies. And let's say 90% was aberrant, so this is 0.9, and 1% is two copies. And divided by um, the, the ploidy. And this is this uh, ratio for different types of, of uh, array platforms. So anyway, so this uh, log R that you get is based on the actual number of copies of the A allele, B allele, the aberrant cell fraction, and the ploidy. And you do the same thing for the B allele frequency. Um, so these are the measurements that you have. So you use algebra to flip these around. So you get number of copies of the A allele and the B allele in terms of the log ratio, which is this R, and the B allele frequency, given a specific uh, psi and rho, which is ploidy and uh, percentage cell fraction. So what you can do is to create an energy landscape uh, where you're trying to assess the goodness of, well, you know it's integer copy number, and you want to try to figure out that these local minima are where you have the best fit. Um, so that means, like in this first case, at, at this point, that ploidy of 1.77 and a aberrant cell fraction um, it's almost perfectly integer copy numbers that you can get uh, and solve you know, what the, the sample uh, copy number is. Um, so ASCAD performs this minimization, comes up with the ploidy and cell fraction, and specific uh, copy numbers across the genome. Now, it's able to do that in the original paper on 91 of the, the samples that they tried out of 112, I think. So 81% was able to come up with a good uh, solution. 21% uh, of the samples did not generate any results, any good results. And that happens where you have uh, no dominant clone. It's very multiclonal or very noisy. So just one point is uh, people think that that gas will just dump this stuff in and gives you the, the right answer every time. Uh, unfortunately, no algorithm is going to be able to do that. Uh, it does a good job for mm, most of the time, but not all the time. Um, so I want to show you just uh, quickly one example of that. So here is a sample. Sample one, the tumor. This is the normal. And this is what ASCAT interprets the, the result to be. So if you look at what ASCAT has done, is it takes this, this profile, this log ratio and B allele uh, profile, and optimizes it, and it comes up sorry, with the fact that chromosome 4 and 6 are normal, and most of 11 is diploid. Chromosome 14 and 19 um, are the copy neutral LOH, and then you have some amplification going on. So let's look at chromosome 6 and 4. Here, so you can see six has uh, it's gone down the log r uh, and four, but as you can see with the BLS frequency, it's it's quite balanced. So you got the fifty percent. So um, and same here with with eleven and thirteen, it's the same level. So it looks diploid, but it's missing the middle. So that's and UPD, and same thing with nineteen. So looking at the sample, 
you could say, yep, that's probably a very good interpretation and high copy gain here um, going on, on on chromosome 1. Now, if I had looked at the original SNP6 uh, data, um, you could see that without doing any correction for ploidy, we were calling chromosome 4 parts of it as maybe mosaic losses, um, which in a relative sense, that's what you would see. So this is now all the probes. And uh, you can see that we're calling these areas as losses because the data has been shifted down. So if I wanted to correct this myself manually, I would have to say, well, chromosome, chromosome 4 and chromosome 6 are deployed. And, and manually um, set that state. So now it's going to go and, and reprocess the array. And it will come up with something um, probably very similar to the Hascat. In this case, it was easy for me to visually inspect. In some cases, uh, it's, it's much harder to visually inspect. And, and I'd rather Hascat try to come up with a solution. And as I mentioned before, sometimes the solutions are not really something that I think is, might be right, but um, it's another, I guess, vote um, in how to interpret the result. So just going to wait till this uh, finishes recentering. So what the processing does, uh, the fast two, um, once you recenter, it has to recompute all all the calls. So it takes it just a little bit. Okay. So now we've shifted this up. So if I look at the overview of this picture, I think it looks very similar to what the ASCAT case. So chromosome 11 in both cases is normal, and we get the gains. We get the UPD on 19, um, but this one was done manually, and this was done uh, automatically through ASCAT.